In this video, number four, I will be showing you how to get more health. I'll leave right where we left off. If for QEMU users, there is a different command for booting after install and booting before install. You just uh, take off that last bit that tells where your installation drive is, and it would work just the same way as if you took your installation drive out. For everybody that's uh, using physical machines, take out your installation drive. You'll see something with boot on it. Oh yes, also I took out the uh, argument that adds a boot menu. We don't necessarily need it, so I'm not going to include it. Uh, let's see. I'll give a little bit more room. And we will begin booting. Just as if we typed in reboot at the prompt and did not immediately uh, uh, shut down the machine before it finished, like I did. So, you can just continue on and it will uh, go through the boot prompt for you. You don't even need to press enter when you uh, get BOOT and then uh, greater than. It'll do it for you, though it might make a loud beeping sound. You don't want that. Uh, back to the central focus of the video. There uh, are a couple of ways to get help on OpenBSD outside of these videos. There are other videos on YouTube, sure. But, uh... There are only a few official venues for advice. There are some books about it. Well, there's really only one that's up to date, which is Absolute Open BSD. It's, uh, it's a little out of date, though, so it's not going to be right in every place. So it's not the best, but it's complete, which is a good thing. Something similar to books are man pages. They are great because they allow you to read manual pages like you'd find in, say, a car. And uh, just keep them inside of your operating system. If you had the same... Uh, sheer amount of documentation as you have on OpenBSD inbuilt in the operating system, you'd have a whole bookshelf. It's It fits very, very nicely into a hard drive because you can fit a whole library information nowadays into a hard drive. And it fits in there well. There are a couple of ways to get to it. The first one I'm going to go through is the web interface because you're not always going to have access uh, to a computer with OpenBSD on it when you have an OpenBSD set type problem. You're going to want to go to man.openbsd.org and you have manual pages. You look for a term, which is a terminal. Sorry, no, not a. Uh, you look for a search term, which. Uh, is just a group of letters in a command. Let's first just look at the man page for man, which is the program you use to view manual pages. It displays manual pages. One of the most important arguments is dash k, which will do a propose. To get to a propose, we would just type in a propose and hit man which would be the same as typing in the command man, a space, and then a propose. These allow us 
us to search manual pages so that you can put in any search term you want. Like, I want to look at things that have, I don't know, a fish in them. And I, I'll, uh, allergies to fish are no problem in OpenBSD. I can see that clearly. If I want to see everything that has an A in it, I get that. And just to show you, I will do a search for A, and you can see it's in every query. Let's do a B. In a propose, not in man. If you just press enter, it will do man. of stuff with A and lots of stuff with B. It does either search term. If it has A in it, it will be displayed. If it has B in it, it will also be displayed. That is how a propose works. All right, let's log in to our uh, machine. You get your login prompt and you type in your username, you press enter, whether it is text or graphical. Then you type in your password and it will not be displayed as little stars like sometimes they are. This is for your own safety. Nobody standing behind you will be able to determine the length of your password. Very secure. And then press enter once you're done typing your password and now you're logged in. Let's log in. We get a terminal, no matter whether you're using the graphical interface or not. We are currently in the window manager FBWM, which is a utility you can use to change the positions of your windows. Look, I can drag something around by clicking and dragging with the left mouse button. Ha! Joy is fun. I can use the edge of a screen, I can use the bar, and I can even use a corner, but that will not uh, change the position of the window, it will actually change the size. Uh, this is the bar, by the way. There we go. Look, our window's bigger. Hooray. Another fancy thing I can do is click inside the window, which will allow me to use it. If I click outside uh, any window, it will show me the root menu, for which I, from which I can start a new terminal. Whoa, there it is. And now I can start using it. To go to the other one, I simply hover over it. Even when I'm outside of it, as long as I, it's the most recent one I've hovered over, I can use it. Congratulations. Uh, let's go and put one window on top of each other, and what if I select this window, it doesn't automatically go to the front. That's not what I'm used to. What you can do is click the icon, and then click raise. Whoa. If you move a window, it will automatically go to the front. What you can do to lower it is click lower and it will go behind another window there are lots of other stuff you can do and uh, maximize will make it the whole screen full uh, but we don't want that because it's too big well uh, there are lots of stuff there's lots of stuff in the terminal great fun first thing you can press control C and then that will undo or stop, not undo, whatever you're doing. Like, for example, if I have a whole bunch of garbled text on the screen, I can do Control-C. And it'll take it off 
give me a new line. If I don't want it to give me a new line, I can do Control U, which will delete backwards, and I can do Control K, which will delete forwards. Those those are less common. The fancy one is Control C. Control C, Control C, Control C. It's very important. Another thing I can do is I can move around with the arrow keys. Left, right, left, right. Home will go to the very beginning, and will go to the very end. And if I do up arrow, it will go to the last command. I can press enter to execute something. Enter, up, enter, up, enter, up, 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 down, down, down. Let's see if I do another command. And then I did up there, up again. And it'll do one further. And then I can do down, and it'll go back. Control C, it'll stop. Yay! I can do so much because it's very powerful. Back to the main focus of the video. Man. It's a command to read man pages on the local system. And let's go and check out man again because I, I already forgot what it does. It does a manual page of the name specified. So, I instead of typing in man in the search bar, I can type it after the man command. Like, uh, uh, let's see, what was one of we do? Uh, man intro, which will do an introduction to general commands. See, also, it's very important because it shows you about other commands. If you start at intro, uh, you can get to, uh, many, many things in the system just by following the see also pages. It's a very good way to learn stuff. Uh, what's better, I hope, will be this video because it is structured end to end, like a book. Uh, you can do a propose, and then you can type in whatever search query you want. These are all things that start with, or have man in them. Command scripts for system startup RC. Ha! Ah. Good. Another way to do a propose is to do man-k, which is the same as a propose. And there it is again. I said, man dash k does the same as a propose. The dash k is a flag, which is a dash, and then the rest of it, a space, and then your argument. Sometimes you have an equals. It's great. All right, another thing's a mailing list. But first I want to finish telling you about how to use the terminals. Fix it. We'll turn it off. If you're in a just the plain old command line without having installed X, it would make you log back in because you're just done. It's not like uh, X, which is the graphical stuff, which lets you keep going and editing. There's a fancy thing you can do, which is uh, once you start typing something, you can press tab, and it finishes it for you as long as there's nothing else that ends the same way. For just the command, if I, it won't complete my search query because there are an infinitely many um, search queries available. Uh, also, it would be hard to develop it just because. Uh, auto-completing things other than commands is difficult. You can also do files, which I'll get to later in another video. Uh, look. Turning off the computer, very important. You can uh, go exit, which will get out of X, and normally what you can do just to turn off OpenBSD is you can uh, just press the off button. And 
it will. What did I do? Oh no, Kyriam, you did something bad. Uh, if you're root. Oh, yeah, no, it did the thing right. And that'll just turn off your computer. Make sure not to hold it down, or it will uh, forcefully shut down your computer. Which is not good because it will uh, just stop everything in the middle of running and it won't be prepared. It'll shut down wrong. Usually nothing will break, but that's no guarantee. So you should not do it frequently. You should get into a habit so that you can do it. Another thing is the OpenBSD mailing list. You can get help there. Go to openbsd.org. There are uh, then go to the mailing list link. There are a set of rules. Plain text, 72 characters per line. Don't put images in there, don't put fancy formatting, because people won't be able to read it. People in OpenBSD usually use text mail clients because that's uh, that's their needs. People sometimes uh, don't have a, a workstation that really needs to use X, the fancy graphics, so they just don't have them and you can't display them. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing read everything the FAQ which is another way of getting help for OpenBSD it will guide you through the basic stuff like I do in these videos as well uh, if you're doing anything more complicated than this video check it out it's very important Um, let's see. Make sure you get a subject line. <sighs> Don't put a signature on it unless it's uh, modest. Stay on topic, include important information. If it crashed and you have a crash message, you can't copy and paste it you're going to have to take a screenshot of the screen or transcribe it. More people like if you transcribe it than take a screenshot of the screen. So if you want the most people to help you, it might be a better idea. Make sure you have uh, a DMESG where you type in DMESG and then copy the output to your clipboard. Paste it in your mail client and then send it off. That'll tell what... Uh, things have gone on in your screen, especially uh, stuff that you plug in and unplug. It's very good for that. Your version is good. What you're running is good. Don't yell at people for thinking differently than you. People all have opinions on things. Try to put in some judgment to them rather than just following one. Uh, don't uh, say things twice. You can go on a different medium, like if you don't find something in the FAQ, you can go to the mailing list. Ah. Uh, make sure that you... <coughs> Pick the right mailing list. Usually it's MISC, but if, say, you're asking about the ARM platform because you want to get your Raspberry Pi to work, then you're going to probably post it in ARM. If you're in security because you can hack into something and it shouldn't, 
then send it there. It's very easy to join a mailing list. There's a web interface which I won't show you how to use. The simpler way is to send an email to Major Domo with subscribe as space and then the mailing list in the body. You don't even have to send a subject, though you do with the individual mailing lists. And then you'll be subscribed, though you'll, go, though you'll need to do authentication. Just follow the instructions in the email, and you will be subscribed to the mailing list. Then you send an email to the mailing list. Very easy. Sendbug is a utility for sending bugs. If you are absolutely sure that it is not your fault, then you can use this. last one is IRC. The IRC is uh, pound openbsd on irc.freenode.net. If you don't know what IRC is, it is too much trouble and inappropriate in this video to direct you to it, but it is better for short questions and casual banter than helping you with the operating system. If you need to get help with something that requires you to send multiple lines, you're going to either need to paste it to an external thing or just use the mailing list. It's fine there as well. Everybody knows how to use email, so I will expect that you would prefer. Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't know. Uh, please don't use the YouTube comments. They, it makes them hard for me to read them. You don't have to subscribe or like if you don't want to. Thank you for watching, though.